We begin today with public school funding. Governor Phil Murphy boasted last week about fully funding public schools, but that still left 140 school districts facing cuts to their budgets. Our first guest has been a very vocal critic of this issue. Senator Andrew Zwicker represents Hunterdon, Mercer, Middlesex, and Somerset counties, and he joins us now. Senator, good to see you, man. Welcome. Thanks, David. Thanks for having me. Did I get all the counties right there? Only four. I think that's uh, enough to uh, yeah, one, for one person. <laughs> um, I think for the lay person or, or someone who doesn't have kids in public schools, you hear the governor say he's fully funding schools, you think, hey, good job. But that's not exactly what's happening here, right? So, look, let's start with giving the governor applause for increasing the amount of money the state is putting into schools. We have a constitutional uh, you know, requirement to try to do everything we can to make sure that regardless of your zip code, that students are getting a fair and adequate education and that they're funded properly. And there's a formula that's supposed to take yeah. care of that. Right that, now, that school funding formula. That's the thing we we always hear about the SFRA, right? And the S2. You guys kill us with those acronyms. But go ahead. So so this funding formula, which is supposed to be reevaluated every three years, it's been more than a decade since we even looked at it. And now we're in a post covid world. We are in a time when transportation costs have gone through the roof when New Jersey is known as a place for the highest quality special education, but that's gotten more and more expensive. So we have a formula that really needs to be reevaluated. Yeah. But outside of that, we had, you mentioned it quickly, S2. S2 was uh, a law we passed in 2018. It was supposed to make sure that districts that were receiving too much money under the formula, which really shouldn't have happened, were getting what they deserved. And those who were getting too little we're getting what they should also have gotten all along. That was phased in over a bunch of years. What's happened, of course, is that we end up now with winners and losers. And the worst part, and the reason why I've been so upset, is because each of these school districts that have lost money were told ahead of time to plan for a cut. And they said, OK, we don't like that, but we can accept that. And instead, last week, just a couple of days after the governor's budget address, yeah. Cuts became much higher than they ever anticipated or ever could have possibly budgeted for. So let me give you an example. Hillsborough, the town that I represent, they were told to expect a cut of about $250,000. Because they're smart budget people, they planned for a budget cut for up to, about say, $400,000. Everything was good. The number that came out was $2.7 million. How do you possibly, possibly plan for that? And they have cut everything they possibly could. The only thing left to do is cut teachers, cut staff, and increase class sizes. And that's just unacceptable. So when the governor says he's fully funding uh, the school funding formula, that's, that's when he says he's fully funding schools, he means he's fully funding the uh, school funding formula. And, and that's the rub, right? Because the formula itself, you and others say, is flawed. So what's wrong with it? Uh, and how do you fix it? So uh, Senator Vin Gopal, the chair of the Senate Education Committee, is next week going to convene a hearing on this exact topic. How do you fix it? You bring a group of experts that are, are experts in school funding and public school funding and New Jersey public school funding. You bring them around the table and you say, OK, from 2008 to 2024, lots of things have changed. So how can we look at things that I mentioned? increased costs in transportation or special education yeah. or a variety of different things, right? How can we now go back to that and get a formula that's truly going to be fair and modern, regardless of where you live in New Jersey? That's the long-term goal that we have to do. In the meantime, we've got to do something to protect education in 2024 and 2025. And so that's also what I'm trying to do in the short term. So we have a short-term thing we've got to do, protecting education now, and we have a longer term thing, which is, as you're asking, to fix the formula with people who are a lot smarter than me, a lot more experienced with, than me, sitting around the table and doing just so, that. So you, some of your towns, Hillsborough, South Brunswick, uh, Lebanon Borough, others, um, why did they have their budget cuts? What is it that changed from one year to the next that so, in, in, in some cases, significantly changed the, the funding? 
I, I wish I could answer that question. Uh, I have asked. But isn't there the something in the SFRA that says, you know, if you don't press lever number two, that means this happens? So, so for instance, you know, there are things like if your student enrollment goes down, you should get less money. You can account for that. That's fine. That's fair. There's also things that are related to, well, each town should put in their fair share. Seems reasonable. What's changed all of a sudden is a town like Hillsborough, South Brunswick, and the others you mentioned, and I've got more. Uh, they're trying to put in their fair share. Uh, they're running into a bunch of different issues that I'm happy to talk about, but they don't understand why their fair share fair share has changed so dramatically. And so, uh, you know, for instance, last year South Brunswick was told that the what we call the wealth factor went up by over a billion dollars in a year. And when you talk to the mayor and the council, and the board of education, they tell you that's just not possible. So What's no one knows what you're doing. What, wealth, wealth factor. factor. Wealth factor says if you are a wealthier town, you should put more money into the schools. Gotcha. If you're a poorer town, right? So there, South Brunswick, middle class town. Right? I, I live in South Brunswick. All of a sudden, their wealth factor went up by a billion dollars into the formula. Uh, they asked why. They didn't get an answer. In Hillsboro now, they're assuming their wealth factor went up by some enormous amount, but they have no answer. Yeah. So how do you plan for that? And that's the issue we have. And one more thing, David, budget, school budgets are due in the next four to six weeks. So now you have this unexpected cut and you have to put in front of your board of education, your budget for the next school year. If we can't fix this quickly, then teachers are going to lose their jobs. And that's just yeah. not acceptable. You got to build up to allow towns to blow past the two percent uh, local tax cap if they face an aid cut to their schools. It sounds to me like that bill needs some guardrails, no? Well, it has some guardrails. So yeah. uh, I would have disagreed with the blow past part of it. Guardrails, <laughs> okay. right? Guardrails are already in place. So, so here's what's happening. So you take a town like South Brunswick; they are up against that two percent cap that Governor Christie put in. They know that if the state's not going to give them any more money, they can go to the, the town to get more money, but they can't because it's 2% cap. But the guardrail that you're, you're asking about is they can only do it up to the amount that they lost gotcha. from, from this current rent, right? So in South Brunswick's case, it's a couple hundred thousand dollars. So instead of 2%, it might be 2.1%. But currently, they just can't do anything if we don't allow this to change. Lastly, and, and off topic, um, you, there's a bill in front of, uh, I think it's your committee on Monday, uh, regarding OPRA, uh, the Open Public, Public Records Act, some serious reforms to that. Have you looked into this? And, and um, a lot of us here in the press think it stinks. But uh, what's your thoughts on that? There is absolutely a need to modernize OPRA. Uh, the Open Public Records Act, right? Um, and it's being used for commercial reasons that have nothing to do with why people or the press like yourself need to get access to a variety of different records. The, the question now is whether or not the bill in this current draft form is increasing transparency and modernizing or decreasing. And you and some of your colleagues have pointed out a variety of provisions in there that look like it's going to decrease transparency. I've got a problem with that. Other people have a problem with that. Uh, you know, we're, we're in active discussions over the next few days before we get to the hearing on Monday. All right. Can't throw the baby out with the bathwater is, uh, I think, what we're trying to say here. All right. Senator yeah. Andrews Wicker, good to see you, man. Good to talk to you. Thanks for coming on with us. Always a pleasure, David. Thanks so much.